want to make a fun historic looking skirt. I think it's going to look maybe Southern Bellish, maybe, I don't know, just something full and ruffly. I found this really fun curtain with this nice big floral pattern on it and it has this wonderful ruffle with eyelet trim going around the edge. I also have two tie backs, which I'm not exactly sure how I'll use these, but I might use these to trim a jacket or a shawl or a blouse or something to go along with it. Um, the first thing that I wanted to do in my planning process is look at how much fabric I have. I measured the length of my curtains from the top where the curtain where the curtain rod would go through down to the bottom and I have about 70 72 inches. Divide, I want to make my skirt twice that wide, so I'm going to cut these in half. That's going to give me roughly, you know, 72 divided in half, roughly 35-ish inches. I think that's going to come down far enough to make an overskirt. I also have this bed skirt that I want to use along with it because I really like how the colors coordinate. So I think the bed skirt can be an under petticoat and I think that the curtains are going to um, be an overskirt over the top. Um, the other consideration that I have is, is this going to be wide enough? When I measure the curtains across from the ruffle, I get about 30 inches. And so if I take two widths, that's going to be 60 inches wide, and then I'll have two of those, so that's going to be 120. Plus, if the front is open, it can wedge open in the front, that's going to give me a little more space. So I think that I'm going to have enough width that this is going to work. So the first thing I'm going to do to start this project is I'm going to take off the uh, channel for the curtain rod and this I'm going to save and I'm going to use this for um, uh, embellishing a top or my waistband anything that I might need a little bit of extra fabric so I am going to take some care in doing this because I want to preserve what fabric I have the next thing I'm going to do then is measure the length of fabric that I have from here to here and I'm going to cut that in half I'm going to use the lower half of the curtain this nice curved edge to make the front opening of my dress. I'm then going to take the ruffles off the top part at the bottom because I'm going to want to add them to the piece at the top. I'm going to want to have them on the bottom so that there's ruffle going all the way around the bottom. Um, at that point, I think I'll be able to make a petticoat using this bed skirt and it, hopefully it'll turn out cute. So let's do it and we'll see what happens. The first thing I'm doing is carefully um, picking out some of these stitches. Once I get the first ones picked out, a lot of times the rest of them will rip out fairly easy. You do have to take a little bit of time sometimes to get these first where they reinforcing stitches out. I'm not a big seam ripper person. I like to use my small scissors. So here we go. Now that it's started, it's it's off. I'm also there's some now that I've done that I find there's some buttonholes up here. Um go through both layers of fabric. And so I'm not going to be able to take off this top edge. So um, probably So I'm just going to leave that for right now <laughs> until I decide what to do. and I'm going to do a little bit of math. Um, I want to make sure because I don't want to include the ruffle in my final length because I'm going to take some of this ruffle off the top and it's going to be added to the bottom. Um, 
I'm going to make sure I'm going to have enough ruffle to do that. So I've done my map and now I'm ready to cut my curtain. I line up my tape measure with the length that I want my curtain panel to be. I like to use a metal tape measure like this because it's stiff and it sits on the fabric better than my standard sewing tape measure. I also use the lines in my floor to help straighten my fabric. Next, I'm going to remove the ruffle from the edge of the curtain. As I started to remove the stitching, what I realized was the ruffle had been stitched directly to the curtain. And when I started to remove the stitching, it also removed all of the ruffle. Here I'm going to show that to you. You can see that as the stitching comes out, so does all the ruffle. I don't want to lose the, that ruffle, and so instead of removing the stitching, I am just going to cut the ruffle off the edge of the fabric. And then do it all over again. Here I am sewing the ruffles onto the bottom of the fabric panels that will make the skirt. And repeat. Then I sew the panels together from the hem up. I always want my hem to be even, and I'd rather have to adjust the fabric at the waist. Despite measuring, the front is shorter than the back. So I decided to make the front on a waistband and then make the back with a drawstring. Once the waistband was cut, I basted the front of the skirt together. Then I was ready to attach it to the waistband. I used my quarter method and I pleated the skirt onto the waistband. Here I'm going to divide the second half into quarters and once I have my waistband marked then I'm going to do that again with the skirt and I am going to pin those marks together and then I am going to pleat the fabric onto the waistband. This is something that the first couple times you do it it seems really awkward but the more you do it, the faster it goes, and you'll be really quick at making pleats and making them relatively even. They don't have to be perfect. This is a costume after all, but you can make them so that they look pretty good. Periodically, you see there, I flipped it up to make sure that I had the pleats going the right direction and that I liked the way that they were looking. Once the pleats are all pinned in place, I'll just stitch them down. I don't like to sew over my pins, so I stitch for a little bit, and then I take my pins out, and then I stitch again. Just make sure you have bobbin thread. On one of these, I was all the way done with all of my pleats and realized I hadn't stitched it together at all. That's so annoying. I have been told that there are new machines that tell you when your bobbin thread is out, and I kind of want one of those. Point, I finished the waistband and while I was at it I sewed the drawstring through the back of the skirt. So I have the overskirt that far. I put a non-adjustable waistband in the front so it would be nice and flat and I put a drawstring through the top of that curtain in the back. And that way the back is adjustable. I'm pretty happy with how this is looking at this point. It's got lots of um, space in here. You could use a little bit bigger hoop if you wanted to. This is a 30 inch diameter hoop at the bottom. Um, ignore all the embellishments that's left over from Cinderella and this was Charlotte's hoop. 
Um, the next thing I want to do is make my underskirt. And you can see that when you have a hoop, the distance that you need to measure is different from going straight down. You know, if I wanted to go straight from the waist down, we're at about 44 inches. But if I'm going to go from the waist, and you can see my skirt's down a little bit. From the waist, and I want to be able to come out over the top of the hoop, we're now at more like 46 inches. So you do have to pay attention to how full your hoop is and how much extra length that's going to add. Uh, I'm probably going to go, I am going to go for about a 46 inch um, finished length underneath of this skirt. The other thing is if you happen to be using a bump pad underneath of your outfit. So you can see if we want to have that extra, extra um, fullness in the back, when we measure down over the top of that, or maybe now more in the 47 inch range. If you look, you can see that this is going to pull up just a little bit in the back because of this. Um, just something to think about. Next, we're going to make the petticoat. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because I have a video post about making a petticoat. But basically, we're going to cut the end off the bed skirt and then cut it in half. I took the discarded end of the bed skirt and made tiers of ruffles to go up the front. I marked the center of the petticoat and the center of the tiers and then measured so that they overlapped about the same amount. I added 3 inches of length to the front and 5 to the back. I put more fullness in the back. Because of this, my side slits were not at the side seam. I used bias tape to bind the edges of my slits to keep them from fraying. I stitched the bias tape on right sides together and then I flipped it over to the back and then I stitched it again just to hold it down. You just do this in one piece and kind of fudge it at the point of the slit. Here is the petticoat underneath of the overskirt. You can see those nice ruffles. You can see the back hangs down close to the floor and it looks good over the top of our bump pad. I needed to add a blouse and so I found a shirt that had a round collar and cuffs. I pinned the curtain ties to the front of the blouse and then I used one line of stitching to applique it to the front. And here we have our finished outfit. I did add a little bit of lace to the edge of the collar and the edge of the blouse just to give it a little bit more detail. Alright, so here is our finished outfit. Sort of a fantasy historical look. I used the blouse and these are the curtain ties that I just applique to the top, giving us over to the shoulder so we have that sort of off the shoulder look. I utilized the buttonholes that were there as part of the curtain tie backs and it just buttons on to the front button there which holds it in place nicely. Around on the back it just comes down and um, meets in the back there, nothing fancy. Um, I'm using a bump pad just because it's going to give a nice shape to our outfit. Uh, the blouse is underneath of that because otherwise it doesn't um, go over the top real well. The next thing I'm going to add is the petticoat. I made the petticoat about two inches longer in the back so that it would have a little bit more distance to go over this bump pad or whatever petticoat that you wanted to do. I also off-centered it so there's more fabric in the back than there is in the front. 
because a lot of times that's where you want more fabric depending on what your style is. You want more poof on the sides and on the back and you want your front flatter. The, um, so the back piece is actually like around 20 inches and this front piece is more like 14. Kind of matches the front of the skirt. I cut the bed skirt up and made layers. That's going to show under our overskirt. And after I had them all um, in place, I ran a line of stitching down that sort of tacked the edges of those ribbon or the edges of those ruffles in place so that if you were going to dance or twirl, at least those ruffles would sort of stay where they're supposed to. All right, so there we are with our underskirt. My skirt is going to pull down the backdrop here. <laughs> Next, we're going to take and put our curtain overskirt on. those nice ruffles and those curved front edges of the curtains to make our pretty skirt front. And then the back again is a drawstring. So this makes it really flexible with sizing. Um, it could fit a variety of different size people could go over a variety of different sizes of petticoats. I use twill tape for my ties. I left this back center seam open just a little bit so that these ties can tuck down in there. And then I thought that the dress was kind of plain here in the front and needed a little something else. So remember that piece of fabric that was the top of the curtains. I did think about different things as I was doing this. I thought about putting an insert into the sleeves with some of this um, flowered fabric. I thought that would be really pretty. Um, I thought about doing something around the collar, but what I ended up with was a sash. And I took a 20 inch piece and I folded it over a little bit of interfacing to give it some body. And that could just tie around our waist. It'll cover up all of our different waistbands. And this will be adjustable because we're just gonna tie it in a knot here in the back. So, we have a few threads here, but here's the back of our dress. You can see it comes down to the ground um, because it's a little bit longer. Again, the front of the petticoat is about two inches shorter than the back of the petticoat. It comes around. We have that nice waistband there. We have these nice ruffles in the front. I put a little extra lace trim on the cuffs and on the collar because I think that gives it a little more vintage -y historical look. And there we have it. How much did this cost? The blouse I got at a thrift store for 50 cents. The ruffled curtains, it was one panel with the tie backs, that was seven dollars. And the bed skirt was a dollar. So I added a little bit of lace and then I added some scrap fabric from a different project. So all together the supplies that went into this were under $10 and this took me probably oh, three and a half ish hours to do. This is the really fun thing about upcycling is that we can have a really fun outfit that doesn't cost us a whole lot of money and doesn't take us hours and hours and hours to make. Here is a look at the dress without the bump pad. You can see we have a little bit different silhouette here. probably can't see quite all the way down to the bottom, but the bottom of the petticoat just brushes the floor. 
which a lot of dresses actually have a little bit of a train in the back. So that's not such a bad look. I wanted to show how the adjustable sizing works. This is a larger dress form. Um, you can see that the blouse is much more filled out. Here we are on the side. You can see like how much shorter the ties are in the back. Um, but this still looks good. So this will work for a wide variety of sizes and still be an effective costume. If I wanted to fit this on somebody who was larger still, the, probably the easiest way to do this would either be to replace the blouse, which would be easy enough to do. Find a larger blouse. This is just on here with one row of stitching. You could pick the stitching off and you could replace it on something else. The other thing that I would do is I would slice this blouse down the center back and add a pleat of white fabric in here because then we would have more chest space and more back space. So those would be um, a couple different ideas. Something also that's nice about this outfit is that if you have somebody who has a high waist, you know, this will easily fit up and over someone with a tummy or a, a pregnancy or anything like that. So the, a costume like this has, takes a little bit longer to put on because of the pieces, but you do have a lot of options with how you're going to use it. I think that the top looks like it's missing something. I would like to see maybe a brooch up here, maybe down here. You could also put a bow. Um, I don't have anything right now, but I do think that this would look good with a nice round something as a focal point right there. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you'd like more information on this project, you can find it on my blog at www.costumecrazed.me. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy costuming.